Hello and welcome to the Justice Factor. Ten senior lawyers from KwaZulu Natal want to take public protector Tulima Donsela to court because they believe her report on Ganja is, I quote, inaccurate, inconsistent, and full of contradictions. The leader of the Concerned Lawyers and Education is for Equality Before the Law, Comfort Ngidi, joins me today to discuss his organization and why it wants to protect President Jacob Zuma. After that discussion, we'll give you a winner and loser of the week. But first, who's winning and who's losing as the May 7 elections come closer? My guests to discuss the election campaigns are Professor Susan Boyson from Vets University and senior political reporter at EWN, Stephen Hrotes. Guys, welcome to the show. Let me start with you, Stephen. I mean, Roni Castro's Nozizo Majala Ruklesh come out and say, don't vote or spoil your ballot paper if you can't vote for the ANC. What are they saying exactly, and does anyone care? Really? Yeah, good evening. You know, I think on the one level, what they're really saying is they're frustrated, they're emotional, they're angry, they're disappointed. They could be, they're essentially saying there's no one they want to vote for. I don't see what makes them so special in one level because many millions of people around the country, around the world in different democracies have exactly the same problem. If you live in the United States and you're a communist, you can vote for the Republicans or the Democrats for all the impact it will have. The same would happen in Britain. So on the one level, I, I get why this is important. And I think it is important when people of their moral caliber say this. On the other side, to not vote or spoil your ballot means that you cut off your own political voice. Do you agree with that, or will this catch on? I mean, do you see millions of young people out in Limpopo saying, I'm going to listen to Ronnie Castro's, I'm not going to vote? <laughs> I think most people have already decided, made up their minds whether they're going to vote or not. Interesting point, which ANC in their massive response against Ronnie Casarols is totally leaving out of consideration, is research shows that a lower turnout rate this time around will actually advantage mm. the ANC. Mm. It is those people who are not quite happy or very unhappy with the ANC and still want to vote, who may possibly vote for another party. Good. Caswell said that is kind of tail end, but low turnout will be advi uh, to advantage of the ANC. They should be saying go, <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Well, go. <laughs> <laughs> but then who loses if the ANC gains from this? If the ANC gains from this, you know, there is the EFF, we expect to get about 5 or 6 percent, maybe a bit more, in this poll. They are eating into existing support of the ANC and potential new support of the ANC. COPE, for, as five years ago, of the seven percentage points of seven percent of yeah. support. Four percentage points of those came from the ANC. And that means uh, if the EFF gets five or six percent, they're already doing more damage to the ANC now mm. than uh, COPE did five years ago. What about the DA, Stephen? You know, the DA is interesting in this because on the one side, it really depends on who doesn't vote and who does vote. So if everyone who is potentially going to vote DA comes out and votes, and everyone who could potentially vote for the ANC, some of them take heed of this campaign and don't vote, then of course it benefits the Democratic Alliance. But generally speaking, it, it benefits the bigger parties more than anyone else if you don't vote. And so the ANC, I think, would have to be the big victor. But it does depend on who, and it'll be quite difficult to work out who. The other thing to say is that there's no difference in the sort of column at the end, the extras column if you like, on people who spoiled their ballots deliberately, in other words, with a heavy heart, they did it yeah. after, you know, and shame and frustration. Shaking along there. And someone who's just hung over because they had a Tuesday night, <laughs> you know, you just don't know. <laughs> um, you mentioned the survey, Susan Boyce, and um, the ANC was at your new university on this TV channel on, on Thursday. A lot of people said Guadamantashe seemed to be losing the debate. Um, a lot of people, I was at another debate on the same day. And, you know, um, um, Malusi Gigaba, the, the, the uh, public enterprises minister, seemed to get a lot of negativity. Guadamantashe was in Soweto on Saturday, a lot of negativity. Is, is the ANC... Is the ANC taking heat in this election? It's taking serious heat. Now, the ANC was saying earlier on last year it really aims at 70% or 75% or whatever percentage, wherever. The polls are, like, are indicating, if one takes into consideration those who are registered and those who are likely to vote, the polls are indicating around 60% for the ANC. And that is a big drop for the ANC. Mm -hmm. That would mean that from 10 years ago it's gone down from 69.69% to around 60%, almost 10% decline. It's not a collapse, but that is a serious 
serious setback for the ANC. And they can be very thankful. The heat is on to such an extent that much of that vote will be because of deep loyalty. And for the ANC as organization, the one with liberation history, the party of Mandela, etc. And despite many other current issues, despite the ANC currently being controlled by a small group, large organization controlled by a small group, that puts a lot of heat, adds massive heat to the whole process. How, how, how much is this due to Nkandla as well? Steven? You know, in Nkandla for me, I think is the sort of middle class issue, maybe urban middle class to be mm. more specific, which is why Greta Mantasha had trouble on Saturday. He was in Soweto. Mm. Um, and so that is urban and parts of it now very middle class. Mm. So, so I think that's the one thing. I mean, I hear, I hear what you say, Prof, about you know, the liberation dividend, and I think that's right. But it's also, if you go into, I mean, I did, Soweto was my patch for the 2004 polls. Life there has changed dramatically. Roads are tarred, you know, Jabulani, Maponya, more, take your pick. It's entirely right for people there to think, well, the ANC does have a good story to tell for me, and so I'm going to vote for them. But then why the does he get such a, a, a hostile reception? Because it is the issue dominating at the moment. Mm -hmm. What has happened is that the ANC, I think, has started the campaign late because of Nkandla. They've made, in my view, a big mistake in allowing the damage to Jacob President Jacob Zuma's brand damage the ANC's brand, possibly long term. Um, but once the ANC starts campaigning, you spoke about the political machine, it really swings late and it swings hard. That rally on the Sunday before, they'll fill FNB Stadium, they'll probably fill one nearby as well, <laughs> and it'll be something no one else can match. <laughs> it seems to me, Professor Boyson, that this election is it's becoming clear there's the DA, there's the ANC and the EFF. What about the rest? Are they, are they gone us? Are they just 2% less parties? Where's the IFP? Oh. Yes, yes, and the NFB and UDMs or Freedom Front, all of these, and not even to mention then lots of newcomers. Mm -hmm. These we parties. Had, uh, PAC and Azapo here. Yes. Uh, I think this is their last TV appearance, but let's see. <laughs> <laughs> it could very well be. You know, they, uh, these parties are wonderful for our multi party democracy, mm -hmm. and it's wonderful that these parties are happy to participate, even though they're going to get these minuscule percentages of the national vote. They give color and flavor to our multi party democracy, and they make me a smaller groups feel they are included in this whole process. So they're very important, but many of them risk losing their deposits and they are not once, it's a great killer for small political parties to go into parliament. And that's one thing the EFF would have to be very careful for, mm. especially because they say they're positioning for 2019, the next election, and so that they don't get swallowed by this mas massive machinery, which is the parliament, and that they retain their uh, external to parliament positioning. Stephen Reuters, you've spoken many times to Zelin Zimavavi of Kosatu. Is he going to campaign for the ANC in this election? Oh, what a difficult choice for him. You know, on the one side is General Secretary, the biggest name in Kosatu. I mean, if you yeah. ask people, who do you know in Kosatu, he's the name they spit out. Um, and, and for him to not campaign for the ANC would be bad. You know, in Eastern Cape in particular, where the ANC is, is I think, going to have serious problems in the Nelson Mandela Bay Has municipality Nusa area. Has Nusa told him not to campaign for the ANC? I think, I think that Ivan Jim and Zuelan Zimavavi know each other well enough, and I think trust each other now to a point as well, that they're going to make this issue an issue that lasts for two weeks because it's so much fun to discuss and it puts heat on the faction within the ANC that they don't like. Is it over for the tripartite alliance as we know it? Is Kosati about to split? Is the Labour Party, will a Labour Party have been positioning itself for 2019, as you say? The great tripartite alliance, that notion has been a myth for a long time, and especially in the last five years, where the SACP has really become incorporated into the ANC, have l has lost its radical edge, and so have lost so much of their credibility there. And Kosati, I don't think those cracks can ever be mended in full. Mm. Professor Susan Boyson, Stephen Reuters, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. After the break, we ask lawyer Comfort Ngidi why he thinks President Zuma needs his protection. News that moves. ENCA.com.